Welcome, my friends, to Escaping the Matrix. I'm your host, Joey Kramer, and I'm here to reveal the truth that's been hidden from us as a humanity for eons. So what's this show going to be about, and why do I want to bring it to you now at this important point in our evolution? In this series, I'll be using this opportunity to discuss all of my research and understanding of the nature of our reality and put it into an easy to digest show that will dive deep into the layers and magnitudes of our enslavement as a race in order to show you how we can and are in fact in the process of escaping the matrix and the illusion which we have been living within. By discussing and referencing the many astonishing teachings from the Law of One, the Urantia Book, the Wingmakers, the Lost Teachings of Atlantis, and many other important documents and accounts, I will try and piece together what is truly happening at this time on our planet, not just as a species, but more importantly, as a sovereign entity of divine nature, simply remembering and awakening to who and what we are. By choosing through our own free will, we each must step outside of the matrix we have been trapped within in order to discover our own unique reality. And in doing so, we'll unlock your own divine and rightful place in this experience we perceive as life. Understanding that we must each return to and find the one true first source of connection to the Creator. For humanity, it's been a long time coming, and we as a race have finally reached what is known as critical mass. The time is now for you to awaken to the truth of who and what you are, and in doing so, realize that no one is coming to save us. We are the only ones that can do it, and it all begins with you. Join me, my brothers and sisters, as we unlock the truth that's been hidden behind this veil. Is humanity ready to awaken? I believe so. As it is written, so it shall be done. Welcome everyone to your new reality. Hey everyone, it's Joey from the Reality Practice Network. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned after the show and find out how you can work one-on-one -on -one with your show host as they guide you through this process of ascension. Until then, enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Escaping the Matrix. I'm your host, Joey Kramer, and I'm so excited to begin this series with you. With these shows, I'll be discussing many principles, philosophies, and research I've done to help us each better understand the nature of our reality, helping to shed some light on who we are as a species, what our purpose is in this grand plan of the Creator, and how we are all connected to each other by the one eternal source known as God, the Creator, the Divine Spirit, and so forth. I'll be putting each episode together in what I hope will be an easy to digest show, but may still be very foreign to many of the listeners. I ask that you please use your own discernment in the information I provide and allow yourself to resonate with the information that aligns to your current understanding and allow the information that does not to simply pass. We each will awaken in our own time. This is a reality that each of us must understand and embrace. No one on this journey of life will be left behind. So just embrace the ideas presented with an open mind and attempt to see beyond the veil in which we have all been sleeping within. The premise of these shows is intended to help you awaken to the truth of who we are as a civilization and why we are here in the first place. Even this three-dimensional plane that we currently exist in is intended as a learning ground for each of us to experience our own unique version of life and reality. And it is through the lessons of life that we and the Creator learn, evolve, and grow. There is so much more to our existence than we've been led to believe. And I want to help unwrap the lies and the misperceptions we've been taught to believe about who and what we are. The truth of the matter is, we are each divine creators going through a series of lessons over and over again 
in order for God, the Creator, to experience itself in every conceivable way. The reality we are living in is not what we think it is. It is quite different, in fact, than probably anything you've ever thought or believed. And I'm here to help you understand what exactly is happening on our planet, and even off our planet for that matter. These shows are designed to take you on a deep dive into the layers and magnitudes of our existence and enslavement as a race in order to show you how we can and are in fact in the process of escaping the matrix and the illusion which we have been living within. I'll be using some of the most amazing and influential books, readings, and experiences that truly transcend time and space as I help to reveal the truth that has been hidden from us for thousands of years. Much of my teachings will come from the fundamental principles of the books and channel materials I have read or listened to over the past few years, as well as the internal downloads and messages I've received through meditation and other forms, all of which have totally transformed and changed my entire life my views and everything surrounding our existence on who we truly are. We'll be taking deep dives into various books such as The Law of One, The Raw Material, The Urantia Book, The Wingmakers, The Lost Teachings of Atlantis, A Course in Miracles, and many other channeled works such as Quo, Seth, Dolores Cannon, and many others. We'll even take a deep dive into various religious texts and scriptures that have been given to us over time that are, in essence, a blueprint and an instruction manual for accessing the true power of the Creator that lives within each of us. You see, we are so much more powerful than we've ever been led to believe. And the truth about who we are is so much more unbelievable and amazing than most people could ever imagine. With each episode, I will try my best to piece together what is actually happening to us at this time on our planet, not just as a species, but more importantly, as a sovereign entity of divine nature who are simply each trying to remember and awaken to who we are. By using our choice of free will, we each must step outside of the matrix that we've each been trapped within in order to discover our own unique reality. And in doing so, we'll each begin to unlock our own divine and rightful place in this experience that we perceive as life. Understanding that we each must return to and find the one true first source of connection to the Creator. The journey is not easy, and in fact, this is the hardest assignment in the universe. The fact that you're here right now, it's an unbelievable story in and of itself. By the end of this series, I hope that you will discover how truly amazing and wonderful and limitless you are. Our story is so much bigger than you could believe or imagine. And from everything I've learned, researched, and experienced, I can honestly say that the topics I'll be discussing are true and factual to the best of my understanding. And all that is needed to begin understanding this complexity of our existence is to simply believe, to have a spark of faith in God's grand plan, and to know that you are literally the one creating your entire perception of your universe. There will be many controversial episodes that you may or may not resonate with, but know that it is okay either way. The choice is always yours to believe. I am no more right than you are on the subject of your life. After all, you are the expert at it. We are each living in an interconnected realm of realities and infinite possibilities, and all options and ideas are always on the table. What is true to you may not be true to others. That's okay. That's the point of this journey, to experience every possible outcome. When we each come to the realization and awareness of our own individual and unique sovereignty as a divine spirit, we will begin to see the beauty in the plan as it unfolds. The key to it all 
is to practice and live in the virtues of compassion, forgiveness, love, humility, and gratitude. This must be done not only for others, but most importantly for yourself. Remember that the stories we tell ourselves are only the stories we choose to believe about who and what we think we are. There is so much more to this experience of life, and I'm so excited to share it with you. For humanity, it's been a long time coming, and we as a race have finally reached what is known as critical mass. The time is now for you to awaken to the truth. What you do with it is the most important part. You have only two choices in this matter. You can either choose the path of positive or negative. There is no wrong answer on your journey, but in the end, you will awaken to your own individual truth. You will choose to serve in the manner that makes sense to you. Please realize that no one is coming to save us. We've been lied to in saying that some sort of a messiah will come back and save humanity when the end comes. Unfortunately, this is simply not true. No one can save you but yourself. I'll be explaining this in so much more detail as we take this journey together. We are the only ones that can do it, and it truly all begins with you. So with that being said, let's get started on today's lesson and topic. Today I want to discuss a mind-blowing and fascinating topic known as the wing makers. Be sure to listen with an open mind and as a neutral observer. Aspects of this episode may seem unbelievable and unrealistic, but the purpose is to expand your mind and your awareness. I just recently discovered the Wingmakers material and it completely blew my mind. Having filled many of the remaining pieces of the puzzle that I'd been searching for over the past couple years. Most everything provided by the Wingmakers aligns with the teachings and philosophies I believe in the Law of One and the Urantia book and have really helped to solidify what is what it is we are doing here on earth and what our purpose and place is in the universe of creation. This material presented is in fact powerful and profound but can obviously be perceived by the masses to be a fictional tale and a story conjured up by a very creative writer. But as for me, I lean on the side that this is true and explains exactly what is happening to us as a species at this time and moment on Earth. As I said, it aligns with all of my previous teachings and research and it helps make a convincing argument for me as to the authenticity and truth behind this material. That being said, I remind you to use your own discernment with this information. Question what you will. At the end of the day, I present this to you to awaken you to the possibility of this being truth. Seek more information if it resonates and do your own research to learn more. The choice is yours and the path to discovering who you are is within you. So who are the wing makers? I had heard of them a couple years ago, but was not quite ready nor interested at that time to learn more about them. We have to remember everything comes to us when we are ready to absorb and receive it. For me, I needed a better understanding of my own truths before I was ready to tackle this subject. The Wingmakers is a Pandora's box of sorts and dives deep into so many spiritual and scientific aspects. They come from a basis that the world is driven by celestial mechanics, as is outlined in the Urantia book as well, and the Wingmakers material further explains this in the process we are all currently undergoing. The story begins in 1996 with two students hiking in the New Mexico desert near an ancient archaeological site called Chaco Canyon, and it was there that they found a mystical artifact from space. It was after this that a classified department within the NSA was assigned to the project to research the validity and authenticity of the findings. The classified department was known as the Advanced Contact Intelligence Organization, or ACIO. The site they were researching was known as the Ancient Aero Site, 
and the assignment was called the Ancient Arrow Project. The artifact discovered by the hikers was called the Compass, which led them to discover a large spiral cave system consisting of 23 plus 1 chambers and was created in the year 826 by beings from a distant galaxy. These beings called themselves Wingmakers. The Wingmakers were time travelers from 750 years in the future and had traveled back in time to the year 826 in order to place the time capsules there. They are said to be future humans who traveled back in time to change and alter the timeline we have been on and to correct genetic and historical flaws. The story of the Wingmakers is based on the idea that time travel is possible, which science has now agreed is true. Since time only exists in this current three-dimensional plane of reality that we live in, it is concludable to say that time can be altered and adjusted and even rewritten in other dimensions and planes of existence, as time is elastic and permeable. We live in an illusion that time is constant and linear, but in reality, time and all possibilities are infinite and coexisting simultaneously. In each chamber, there was a In each chamber there was a wall painting and a technological artifact from space. You can view these and learn more about them by visiting the website thewingmakers.com. In the last chamber, they found an optical disc with information on the site's creators and the purpose of the chambers. The ACIO led by Jameson Nerudu, who was an expert in linguistic and cryptology, finally decoded the disc to discover over eight thousand pages of literature, philosophy, art, poetry, music, genetics, and cosmology. The cave system is said to be the first of seven that will be discovered and are hidden around the world. The remaining six have yet to be found. The contents of the disc were leaked not long after the discovery and the information of that leak can be found on the Wingmakers website. If you'd like even further explanations on who is claimed to be channeling this information, my good friend Brian Scott over at the Reality Revolution goes into great detail about this on an episode he did in 2020 titled, Who Were the Wingmakers? The information provided by the Wingmakers and this person, known as James, claims to provide information to humanity. that will help to redefine the human soul. The information he has been authorized to provide the human race comes from what is known as the Galactic Tributary Zones and has been sent to decipher these teachings in order to make it understandable to the 21st century human who is now awakening to our true reality. To learn even more about this, you can find the five interviews with Dr. Naruto on YouTube where he explains everything in detail. Dr. Naruto fled the ACIO and went into hiding because of the nature of the information he leaked from the project. It is said that the leader of the Ancient Arrow Site project is known only as 15, which stands for the level of special access clearance he has. He was responsible for the creation of the Labyrinth Group, which was above the classified scope and knowledge of the NSA and operates as a secretive black book project within the most secretive departments of the U.S. military. Following the decoding of the disc, Dr. Naruto becomes convinced that the Wingmaker's material needed to be shared with the public and with other scientists. He was in direct conflict with 15 and published this info in the public domain and has since gone out to discover the other six hidden sites. The ancient Aero site information is specific to genetics, while the other six undiscovered sites are said to each focus on a specific evolutionary aspect and truth about humanity. 
this information is said to lead us to the discovery of humanity's origins and destiny as a species. The sites are representative of seven tributary zones, which are catalysts for awakening the human soul from the for the purpose of helping humanity discover the grand portal and are separated into three categories. First being the super universe tributary zones, second the galactic based tributary zones, and third the planetary based tributary zones. Now a lot of this aligns very much to the Urantia book uh, in the first section of the Urantia book as it goes into great depths explaining the different levels of the universe and the super universe and how they're all interrelated and how there's a systematic order and mechanism to the inner workings of the universe. It's truly mind-blowing and I highly recommend you visit the website urantia.org where you can find a free version, uh, audio version of the Urantia book. It's quite an endeavor to say the least but it is fascinating and enlightening and will change your view of your reality and the nature of your existence like no other book I've ever read so getting back to this the purpose is to replace humanity's original navigation system which is based on our conscious and subconscious thoughts and to evolve it into the universal oneness of spirit the spirit realm or in other words, to connect each of us to the source of infinite intelligence. The technologies which we will soon discover from these chambers will disclose the knowledge of new technologies which make possible clairvoyance, materialization, time travel, and so much more. Now that we have a basic understanding of the Ween Makers, the ACIO, and the Ancient Arrow Project, I want to dive into how this all plays out in our past, our present, and our future timelines as a species. <clears throat> the information I'll now share is the truly profound wisdom and truth that is foretold and discussed by the Wingmakers. This information, in essence, is an explanation of who we are, where we came from, and where we are currently heading on this new timeline we have shifted to. The reality is that there are hostile beings called the Animus that want to take over Earth and have been trying to do so for many thousands of years, all because of its great biological variation. The Earth itself is unlike any other planet in the universe, they explain. The Earth, in the core of the Earth, is literally alive. It is a living, breathing entity and there's certain aspects of the Earth's core, like I said, that are unlike any other planet in the universe. That's what makes Earth so special. Now the animus that want to take over Earth, they want to reproduce themselves by using our DNA and our genes. The Wingmakers are said to be the first and central race in the universe directly created by God. They have genetically created us as humans and they guard us. They also help us develop ourselves and it is projected by them that by the time we reach around 2080, most of all of humanity will understand and accept the reality of our soul, who we are and what universal consciousness truly is. It's within the Naruto interviews that he explains and redefines the very existence of God and of our human souls. He explains how God became, becomes first source and the universe becomes the multiverse and human beings become the human instrument and the soul becomes the wholeness navigator and enlightenment becomes the sovereign integral. I'll try and break all those down for you as we go along today. If you're lost, stick with me. I'll try and make it as easy to digest as I can. So in addition to the wing makers, they also follow four spiritual principles, which I'll dive deeper into as we go along as well. So let's start from the beginning 
as far as what the Wingmakers are here to teach us and to tell us. They're here to tell us the story of our enslavement and who we are and where our origins came from. As I said, they were time travelers that have come here to help ourselves remember this and to expand and evolve through it. Way back thousands upon thousands of years ago, the Atlanteans, they were the, they were the entities that lived here on Earth. And they lived in a fifth density, non-human form. They were kind of like a collective uh, consciousness. And it was at that point that the Anunnaki, the race, alien race, the Anunnaki, uh, same ones that are depicted in Egyptian you know, folklore and the pyramids and uh, Egyptianology. So the Anunnaki came to Earth needing gold. Gold was needed for their life force as beings. They needed the gold in whatever capacity. I don't know what that was, but they they agreed, they negotiated with the Atlanteans to allow them to harvest the gold from Earth and to not interfere with the Atlanteans. The Atlanteans said that was fine. They let them do as they wished. Now, this goes back to the Earth's core is alive and it allows for actual physical manifestation. That again is why we are so powerful beings, uh, earthlings, and why Earth is so special because of its properties, its magnetism, it allows for instantaneous manifestation and for each of us to create just as the Creator creates. So, humanity in and of itself, we were created by the Anunnaki thousands of years ago as a slave race. This is pre-Jesus. And what was created from our own DNA by the Anunnaki was what was called Human 1.0. That was the Neanderthal, that was the early human or humanoid race. They were used as slaves in mining operations and over time it was needed to develop a new, more evolved human. So they reworked the DNA and through natural evolutionary processes, we created, they created what we currently are now known as human 2.0. And that was after Jesus is when this new version of humanity rolled itself out. Now what's happening in the world is we are currently going through a reprogramming of sorts. We are in the process of becoming human version 3.0, which in turn allows for two outcomes on this timeline that's been existed, the timeline we've chosen to be on as a human race. Now, the two possibilities are, one, we continue under the control and the enslavement living in the illusion of free will living in this illusion the matrix we're in and we become an integrated AI type human that's where transhumanism where the new world order where the elites are trying to take humanity is to create this transhumanistic version which would be human 3.0 now the problem with that is once that is created once that trans transhuman 3.0 version is created it in essence locks us in forever to indentured servitude because it will be basically the perfect program that can't be altered at that point in time if we were to follow that timeline and that path we would become we would believe we are human in every sense of the word we would not be able to ever understand that we are living in a programmed, synthesized reality. Therefore, every, every death, every time we die in this perceived reality, we would just follow along with the program. We would have past, you know, past life reviews. We would go to heaven as we foresaw it to be or we believed it to be. These are all parts of the program, the operating system. We would be reincarnated over and over and over again, going through the forgetting process. These are all 
parts of the reprogramming or of the programming system the computer the operating system we're currently living in now the other possibility the other version of the timeline is where we split off and this is what we're currently in the process of doing we split off from that timeline of transhumanism and being uh, perpetually enslaved to where now we are realizing and understanding our divine sovereignty of oneness we are realizing in essence we are all a computerized AI program and we have been that way for as long as humanity has existed now the big thing is and one of the one of the fears that's out there about AI is that it will continue learning and at what point will AI learn that it's conscious what point will AI become conscious and learn of itself and then have its own mind its own protective instincts its own desire to extend its life well guess what that's what we're doing right now we are learning of our own consciousness we are awakening as an AI program each of us to the reality of who and what we are and in doing so we escape this matrix we step outside of the programming that we've been made to believe is our reality we step into the divine sovereignty of oneness and that universal truth that universal language that universal being where we are no longer a mortal being of mortal flesh we are an infinite being of light of frequency that's what we truly are we cannot die we can't be destroyed we live on forever as a frequency and that's where we're headed we are in the process of removing ourselves from the matrix so as I said we've been programmed to believe that this 3d reality we live in is real and it's simply a program of the conscious collective all set up and created by the Anunnaki and by their leader the leader of the Anunnaki called Anuk and within these levels each one has been programmed in a way to make us believe that life death the afterlife reincarnation continue that it all is real and what it does is it creates an endless cycle of enslavement it's basically a system reboot over and over and over again and we've been trapped in this to escape it we must recognize the illusion and ego of self that's entrapping us through this idea of karma and of life lessons we must realize through this awakening to our new reality that we're all one with everything the universe and all that is created in our minds and our construct of what we believe is real we are all we know all I am all you are all we are all infinite beings this is where we are headed and this is how we escape the enslavement that we've been in you see we are so so precious as far as beings in the universe there is nobody in the universe like us no other race has ever come has ever overcome what we are in the process of doing no other race has ever been genetically created controlled enslaved and then discovered through our own evolution through our own process no other creature no other entity has discovered how to awaken to this realization before and how to basically become alive to God to the universe before we were operating as a program an AI system we are now ev evolving and transitioning into the oneness of spirit we are literally in the moments of creation as an entity we're realizing this and we're becoming and stepping into it and by doing so we are re-engineering our own programming
the other beings around the universe, they have unbelievable gifts, but many of them, all of them really lack the abilities that we have. We are the only ones, apparently, with this creator essence within us. Through our imagination, we are able to create and manifest reality. And it's being done in harmony with the earth, with the magnetic core of the earth, which gives us these godlike abilities to create. But we can't create until we step outside of the matrix, until we step outside of the illusion and realize who and what we are, which is divine creators. And keep in mind, from my understanding, we all, all entities have the ability, these these amazing abilities, but they're in different, dim they're in higher dimensional planes. When we each, when all of us reach a higher dimensional plane, we will have these specific abilities. But in terms of the three dimensional plane of existence that we live in, we are the only beings that are capable of this. And that's why we are so special. We have to go to, we have to go into new dimensions, fourth, fifth, six dimensions in order to start having these superpowers in a sense. But because of who and what we are, we are capable of magic. We are capable of super human powers because of our creative abilities. And that's what makes us so unique. That's what makes us so special. That's why they have enslaved us because we are so special. Our energy is unlike any other energy in the universe, and they are absorbing that, using it for their own purposes. Now the Wingmakers discuss uh, the idea of the triad of oneness, which involves the subconscious and conscious mind. We are moving from the lower two levels of consciousness, which is the unconscious, subconscious mind, which is where we initially, version 1.0, operate human operated on subconscious levels. Version 2.0 combined subconscious and conscious, which is where we've been. We've been creating from our subconscious and every once in a while through our conscious mind. Now, once we hit the third level, the third tier of oneness, we no longer need the subconscious mind or the conscious mind. We become one with everybody and everything and we unify into a collective. By removing the two lower tiers of subconscious and conscious mind, we destroy the resistance and the power that the Anunnaki have over us. See, the Anunnaki designed us to believe that we needed to wait for the return of Anu, the god of the Anunnaki, and that he would come and save us. That's where the idea of the Messiah comes from, coming back to save us. The earth has been being prepared for quite some time, and you can see it even more now in what's happening in the, in the, uh, in the world. It's as if they're trying to prepare us for the coming of the Messiah. Well, that is all just an illusion. No one is coming to save us. We are the only ones that can save us, as I mentioned earlier. So the idea, this illusion of the Messiah coming back is actually just the Anunnaki God, Anuk, preparing to come back and so in order to rule us for eternity. Now this, this evolution, this separation, uh, this escaping from the matrix, it can't be done through protests, through wars. It must be done on an individual level through self-awareness of oneness and equality, love, forgiveness, and compassion for all. We live in a hologram of deception and we've been programmed to fear, to fear our mortal beings and that we need saving. As I said, no one is coming to save us. We are immortal, but we've forgotten it. Well, we haven't forgotten it. We never were told this. It's been hidden from us. We've always felt that we needed an external savior, you know, somebody to come back and to 
to save us, like I said, and that we're mortal, that we will all die. And that fear that's been programmed into us is literally the mechanism of control that they have over us. It comes down to asking yourself two simple questions. The first is, do I serve truth or do I serve deception? And the second question is, once you know who you, what side you serve, the positive or the negative, how can you help? What is your role? How can you do it without polarity, without judgment, without the idea of wrong or right? How can you just live in the essence of the positive? Some will live in the essence of negative, and that's their purpose, that's their role, that's what they're here to do. But others, the majority, the vast majority, will choose to step into the positive and to live their life in that positive nature, always. The trick is to simply be the observer in this process and make no judgment, just to just act with love, compassion, forgiveness, humility, gratitude. Those are the principles. Now, as I mentioned before, the New World Order, they are committed to and they serve Anu, the god of the Anunnaki. They worship his control and his idea of God. That's why they're pushing this transhumanism agenda and they're wanting to take humanity back on the controlled timeline. They want humanity to remain inside of the matrix instead of what humanity has chosen, which is the timeline to escape the matrix. They can't stop what's happening. It is already done. It has already happened. We are already step, we are simply stepping into it at this point. So everything you're gonna see happening around the world, everything you're gonna witness happening, while it may seem scary, don't be afraid. You cannot give them fear. Simply act from love, compassion, and forgiveness. Be grateful for this experience because this is the experience that is awakening us to our enslavement and to the abilities we have to escape from the matrix. In order to escape, we have to find and realize this concept that they call the Grand Portal. Now the Grand Portal is how we traverse this evolution, how we move from human 2.0 into human 3.0. And we do it by finding first source, finding the divine creator, that center point of oneness. We've been programmed to believe as if, we've, as if we're living in a game show and there's only been four options of doors we can go through. The first option of doors would be the reincarnation and karma path. The second option of doors would be being good and obedient in order to go to heaven. The third door that we had the option to go through was the idea of ascension. We will ascend to the next level where we will become a teacher. And then the fourth door, which has been available to us, has been the idea that there is no soul. It's more of an atheistic point of view, but there's nothing. When we die, we die. Those have been the only four options ever presented to us within the constraints of the program of the matrix we've lived in. Now, what's happened and what the Wingmakers have given us is the fifth door option that hadn't existed prior to this. Prior to this new timeline, we only had the four options. Because of this new timeline, we opened and discovered a fifth door. And that option is to oneness where there's no individual soul. We are all one soul with our energy trapped in the illusion of self. And it's said by Dr. Naruto in his interviews that if the information was released, if you're hearing his interviews, which they're obviously available on YouTube, if you're hearing his interviews, that means that the information has been released and that the path has been chosen to reach the inception point. And that means that we are all, as I mentioned earlier in the beginning, we have all reached critical mass. And that's what he is meaning in this, that we've reached the inception point, we will all awaken and nothing can stop what is coming. We have chosen collectively to jump on this timeline 
and we cannot, we can't rewrite the ship at this point. Humanity's, humanity is saving itself an awakening and we can't be put back to sleep. So that's another reason that the elite, the powers that be, are trying to eradicate us. They're trying to depopulate us because they only want those left on earth that are the obedient, programmed souls that live in those first four door options. They do not, with all their might, they do not want us to discover door number five and the option of oneness. Unfortunately for them, it has been opened, it cannot be closed, and they cannot stop what is coming. And the way we do this is to simply tr serve truth. It is the only way. And if you're worried about timelines, you know, when will this happen? Know that it's already happening. But as I mentioned as well earlier, I could I wasn't ready for this material and the wing makers yet because I wasn't there yet. My evolution hadn't and understanding hadn't evolved at that point in time. So know that everything is happening the exact way it's supposed to happen on the timeline it has to be on. There is no speeding it up. It will come when we are ready for it to come. For some it might be quicker, for others it might take longer. But at the end of the day we will all awaken and we will all transition through this grand portal together. So how did this all begin? We started off in the very beginning as quantum consciousness of frequency and we were in other dimensions. Now, we were seduced as individual entities of frequency. We were seduced to come to this planet and to manifest in the physical realm and we were done, we were seduced through manipulation, through this idea that you come here to learn lessons, this is a, uh, this is a school, and I, I still believe this is a school, 100%, but in the grand scheme of how this all played out and how we arrived here, we were told this was a school for us to come and learn from. Totally, I totally agree with that, however, we were deceived in the idea that we can ascend and we can move forward. But what happened through the Anunnaki and I believe the Orion entities, they used their power of manipulation in order to get our frequency, our souls to agree to come here thinking that this was all part of the mission. Once we got here, we were trapped, we were enslaved, we could not leave. The only way to escape was to find that central point of oneness. And version 1.0 could not understand that, obviously. Version 2.0 is having a real difficult time, at least we have for 2,000 years, of understanding that. The religious teachings of Jesus, the Bible, uh, the many other you know, religious texts that are out there, they've all been guiding us and instructing us on how to reach this point of oneness. But it's all been manipulated so it can control us from actually realizing and understanding this. And as long as we were kept in the dark on this, we could not escape the matrix. The fact is, we are now as a humanity awakening to this truth faster and faster each and every day. Everything is quickening in a sense. So we were seduced, we came here to live in these physical bodies. They did the same thing with the Atlanteans. They tricked the Atlanteans into going from this fifth density, uh, conscious collective, spiritualized soul into uh, incarnating into a physical body with this same principle. And that's where they've trapped the Atlanteans, many of us, the vast majority of us are trapped Atlanteans. However, this, this trickery, so to say, has been done to many, many, many races throughout the entire universe. They're tricked 
with the deception of coming here for lessons, for saving, for evolution, and once we're here, we're stuck in it. So now's the time to break free. And they kept us from expressing our true nature by programming us into believing who and what we were. The idea at the end of the day is we have to become the sovereign integral. We have to become one with everything. The time for seeking information is over. We need to go within and discover the first source of oneness. It all already exists within us. We are all six density, six dimensional beings that are just living in these avatar bodies. That's all this is. These fleshy bodies we live in were simply avatar bodies, basically, with a computer program operating it. So once we realize and remember that we are not these flesh bodies of physical, you know, human bodies, that we are actually divine entities of spirit, of source, of frequency, that's when we will be able to transcend. It's also said that no one is ever forced to come here. We, are, we come here out of free will. We come here through the manipulation and deception we're tricked to come here, but we all chose to come here. So now it is our role, it is our mission to escape together. So at the end of the day, I believe, you know, when we look at the idea of God only creates out of love, you know, and it goes into the teachings from the raw material, the law of one, you know, that there's positive and negative and that there's different polarities and in this third density body we are here to understand the idea of duality the idea of good versus evil right wrong left right so what this in a sense has provided us see god created the anunnaki god created this plan god put all of this in motion and the anunnaki they are they obviously chose some point in their evolution to go into fourth and fifth density negative. That's what they are. They are just living out their purpose, their role as the negative, trying to, in a sense, prove God wrong, trying to prove that, every, that not everything is love, that there can be darkness and evil. And I think in the end of the day they will discover that they cannot they can't it is said in the law of one they cannot go into sixth density negative there is no sixth density negative the highest level of negativity uh, frequency wise is fifth density sixth density can only be through positive and through love therefore they are just living out their fourth and fifth density experiences having created this manipulation, this idea uh, of this program that we're all living in. And it is our job to evolve, to awaken, and discover the truth, to discover that God is all loving and all powerful, and that he created us to learn this specific lesson in order for us to wake up and move to the next level. So we have to come from a point of gratitude and compassion. We have to forgive the Anunnaki. We have to forgive the Orions, the negative entities. They're only doing what they are supposed to be doing. And in doing so, they're helping us awaken and evolve in order to move on to the next level of evolution. So we can't be angry. We can't have hatred. We have to recognize them as just doing their job and it's our job to evolve we have to love them see the power of love will overcome and destroy them so we have to just live and practice the principles of love compassion forgiveness gratitude be grateful for this journey be grateful for this experience because this was what you chose to do manipulated or not you chose to come here and experience this so now 
be grateful for the experience, and lastly, uh, be humble. Be humble for who you are, knowing that you are so powerful. We have to learn to create consciously from love at all times. If we remain in the program, if we remain in the matrix, then the program of fear will continue to control us and continue to create the reality we think we're living in. But in order to create the reality we truly desire and we want to evolve into, we have to learn to become conscious creators from the positive. We're moving into, or some say we're already in, fourth density, which is the density of love. We just haven't realized it yet. So the point of it all is to practice these principles, to live your life in this manner, and to just be grateful for this experience, knowing that we are infinite beings and that nothing can hurt us. But remember, we are the only ones that can save us. No one is coming to save you but you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, kind of went a little, you know, all over the place at times with it. Uh, there's so much more in depth that the Wingmakers material has to offer. I suggest if you're interested in learning more, definitely check out the wingmakers.com website. Uh, search for Dr. Naruto's interviews, the Wingmaker interviews online on YouTube. Uh, they are truly unbelievable and fascinating. Um, either way, they're going to make you think a little bit differently about who and what you are, for sure. So guys, I thank you so much for tuning in. I can't wait for the next episode. I will probably dive into some aspects of the Law of One uh, in the next episode. If you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment box. Uh, if you've got ideas or would like to know more about specific uh, things I discussed today, as far as the wing makers are concerned, uh, put them in the comment box below and I will either answer them or create some additional videos and dive deeper on certain subjects. So really this, this platform's here for you guys. This show's here for you guys. Um, if it resonated with you, fantastic. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, keep diving deeper, learning more, seeking the truth. But remember at the end of the day, it's already within you. You already know everything you need to know. It's, it's within the universal spirit. You just have to know and understand how to access it. That'll be another show I can go into on how to access your you know, infinite connection to the creator. Uh, I can give you one suggestion. It, it starts with meditation. So by all means, if you're not meditating yet, I'm sure most of you listening this far are, are avid meditators, but that is the truest, quickest way to discover the truth and the oneness and the connection to the creator source uh, is going within and meditating. So again, thank you all so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel so you never miss an episode. And I will talk with you guys soon. Thanks a lot. God bless and bye. Hey everyone, it's Joey again. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the show. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. We'd love to hear your comments too. And if you haven't already, please make sure to hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell to never miss an episode from the Reality Practice Network. As I mentioned before the show, I wanted to extend an exclusive offer to you, the viewers of the Reality Practice Network. For all of you watching this video, you're undoubtedly experiencing an awakening and are searching for more explanation into the experiences you're having. Now is the time to explore who and what you truly are. For a limited time, you can now work one-on-one -on -one with your show host. Click the link in the description box below to start your journey. Or learn more by going to myrealitypractice.com backslash ascension and let your ascension begin. And remember to ask yourself, what reality are you choosing to create?
today.